what time it is. It's Day by Day Podcast time. Huh? What's up? <laughs> all my friends from all around the world. Oh, we appreciate my. each and every one of you joining us every week here on the Day by Day Podcast. I'm Ryan Day. We got my brother Dakota Day up in the house. And of That's course, right. back with us for week number three. Mr. Jordan Moore, what's up, bro? It's good to be here. <laughs> I enjoy it. Jordan's also bro. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. <laughs> anyway, it's a blessing each and every week. Uh, we just love we love this time together. We love to study. We love to talk about the Lord. This is what the Day by Day podcast is really all about. We have a good time. We just be ourselves. But the purpose of this podcast is to take on whatever conversation, whatever topics on our heart that day that we want to use to bring glory to God and to bring clarification from his word on whatever subject uh, that, that's that's come up in our minds that day. So uh, today uh, we're actually going to be diving into uh, a conversation uh, in which um, we're going to be looking basically between ourselves. We're going to be talking about uh, that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want our time in ministry. First of all, we're going to we're going to tell our story very briefly about how we. We eat. Look at this. I'm. I'm trying to. I've got this. I thing know, here. bro. It's. I feel like I'm trying like Stone Cold Stunner this. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> this bike stand right here. What? <laughs> trying to. <laughs> this is, we're, we're eventually gonna make some upgrades. And by the way, I just want to take a moment to just let you know, mm-hmm. uh, if it's on your heart to help uh, help this podcast, this is not. It's not free to do this. Contrary to some of your opinions at home, you're like, oh, they just sit around in a room and just talk, and that's free. It's easy. Um, to make this podcast actually takes a lot of equipment uh, uh, and a lot of equipment that that, uh, that it costs a lot of money. I mean, from these mics, these thousands are thousands of dollars. These, <laughs> I mean, we've got just in this one little, t- if you could see this room, this is a little tiny room and we're trying to literally jam pack everything we can in here to try to make this happen. And um, we've spent thousands and thousands of dollars of our own money. Um, and which is totally cool. I mean, we're not expecting just everybody to just give us something for free, but at the same time, but we're doing this not just for ourselves. I mean, we enjoy doing this, but we're doing it for your benefit as well. Uh, we recognize that there's people that watch and tune in from week to week that are very blessed uh, by the conversations we have and the content that we bring out. And so I want to just plant the seed. Again, we're not. this isn't a give us money speech. Uh, this is right now I'm planting the seed and saying if, if the Lord lays it on your heart and you would like to contribute to helping us make some upgrades, we're going to need to get out of this smaller space eventually. That's going to be happening soon, so we're already got plans in for that. We're going to have to make some equipment upgrades because some of our equipment, every week we do this, we run into some complications. Well, you know, we've been, we've been spending um, our own funds to do all this, and, like, I know people have been blessed by it, and so it, it, it gets to a point where we're like, we only have so much money to right. spend of our own on some of this stuff. So, uh, yeah, we're just wondering if there's anyone out there that is, yeah, feeling impressed to to uh, want to support our podcast. Let us know if, if that's something you're interested in. We definitely mm-hmm. want Absolutely. to... We definitely want to know like what we can do to make upgrades because like we've been doing this three, you know, the three of us and I, and like, you know, we're like really close to each other and doing this, <laughs> doing this thing here. Like w- before I was sitting yeah. straight like this and I was having to do this and my yeah. neck yeah. had a crick, yeah. a crick, a crick in my a crick, neck, a crick in your neck. And oh man, I tell you what, <laughs> so, I've had enough so we neck We definitely got to make some upgrades. We got this little tiny table here. We want something a little bit more established. Uh, we need to make some some uh, some stand upgrades and some equipment. Right now, we're needing some audio upgrades. We're just we're we're dealing with what we have. And yes, when you watch it and you're listening to this, you're probably like, "Well, it looks good and it sounds good. Why do you got to change anything?" Uh, if you if you could see behind the scenes, sometimes the complications we deal with just to get to this point, mm-hmm. um, you would see that it would be much easier and much more time efficient if we had the proper equipment. And so, again, we've well, we've almost come to the end of this first season. Yeah, and we haven't once made an appeal for, for to give. We haven't tried to beg you for your money. That's not what we're here for. But um, just we're, we're just simply planting the seed. If you want to uh, continue to be blessed by this podcast, um, and, and we really haven't even gotten into a lot of juicy topics. There's a lot of really really that's juicy gonna be season topics. Two. Season two, man, get ready for the storm that's coming. And I say that yeah. in a positive way, not not that we're trying to sow negativity. Uh, where there's just a lot of heavy topics that we have yet to discuss because we're trying to build something here. We'll try to get to a thousand subscribers. That's one of our goals yeah. before the end of this season. Help us get to a thousand subscribers. Please go on and subscribe right now. That little button down at the bottom. Click subscription. Sign into your Gmail account to be able to do that. 
uh, click subscription, give us a thumbs up, put some positive comments uh, in, in the comment section. All of this helps support us and get our videos out there. But I just wanted to take this opening moment, just to establish it before we get into our topic, just to make it clear to you that, again, uh, we are going to be making some changes come season two. And if you are enjoying this and you're loving what we're doing, in fact, this has mostly been me and Dakota. We just now invited. It's our first time we've ever had a third guest on, yeah. Jordan. We want to be able to have Jordan back many more times in the near future. We want to have more guests on in the near future, and sometimes maybe more than one special guest. And so we're going to be making some table upgrades, some, some equipment upgrades. And uh, so be, be thinking about that. Pray about it and say, Lord, if, if, you know, this has really blessed me. You know, should I bless this podcast and donate and help help contribute to uh, uh, to helping these guys achieve their goal of getting into a space and making some equipment upgrades that's going to um, make it easier for them to produce this material and help us save some time? Because right now we're putting hours and hours and hours and hours, and as you know, some of these time, some of these weeks we haven't even been able to do it properly in yeah. a sufficient manner because we would like to record episodes while we're together in the studio, but we can't because we're running into complications, which now makes us have to record them while Dakota's on the road or I'm on the road, yeah. and it just it further complicates There's things. There's a lot of time and effort gets put in these, po- these it, podcast it epico- episodes, and I don't think everyone always understands like how much, you know, when you watch something, you watch something on YouTube and you're enjoying it and it's a blessing to you, you don't always understand the, all of the effort that someone's put in or the money that's been spent and all that. And, and again, it's not about that. We do this because we love it. We, we started this podcast because we wanted to be a blessing to people. Right. We wanted to encourage people. And so along the way, um, it just let us know if it's been a blessing to you and you would like to help support, let us know. Put mm-hmm. in the comment section, hey, you know, I'd be willing to support. I'd be willing yeah. to help. We might start like a Patreon later on where we offer, um, uh, you know, exclusive content uh, for those that would like to support us uh, through that and do more things in the future. But, yeah, we're starting to see as we're growing and as as uh, as we're putting out so much more content, the demand for that is a lot of work. And so we're hoping that and in the future, money. and a lot of money, and a lot of money. So we're hoping in the future, we're cool putting in the work, but we're hoping in the future that some of the upgrades we're gonna have to make along the way, we can have some supporters who appreciate mm-hmm. what we do to help support. Anyways, absolutely. And we're we're taking measures in commercial moving 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 forward. We are taking measures, yeah, to be able to uh, receive those donations appropriately. Right now, that's right. We haven't set that up yet. We're getting it set up. So bear 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 with us on that. But now we can end commercial. In commercial. All right. Um, so, Jordan Moore, it's a blessing to have you, brother. It's a blessing to be here. And uh, you just like you're like one of these people like you ain't gonna speak unless spoken to. So um, <laughs> I just uh, <laughs> no, I, I say that that's respectfully. I appreciate that. Jordan is uh, you're you're very soft spoken, and 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 I appreciate the fact that you only speak when you feel like you need to speak. Sometimes some of us feel like we got to speak just because we like to speak. Jordan says he likes to let people talk that like to talk. <laughs> 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 Anyways, um, ministry. We all came into ministry. So a few weeks ago, actually, some time ago, Dakota and I gave our testimony on how we came to the Lord. Uh, but then once we kind of came to the Lord, there was a development between the time that we really came to God that God opened up to us, kind of contrary to maybe our own plans. We, we planned on going out and doing other things. Maybe we had future plans where we wanted to be. Like, for instance, I wanted to be a high school uh, history and music teacher. And, and that's what I went to college for. And then my last semester of college, when we were all doing small group Bible studies together, God lit a fire in my heart that changed the, the course of my of my life and where I was going to go. Well, let's talk about that. Let's take people through the journey yeah. of how we got into ministry. Absolutely. I go from there uh, and start from, I guess, the beginning. So, mm-hmm. um, Ryan, I know you started uh, a little bit more getting into God and all that. And we talked about that in our testimony. Like, God started working on your heart first and foremost. And you started mm-hmm. to go to church more faithfully while mm-hmm. me and Jordan was still in in heathenism. <laughs> you were going to church, being more faithful. Talk a little bit about that. What was going on? Yeah, real what briefly, led you to I, that? Yeah, I'm not going to go into real detail. If you want to watch, see see how all the how all that developed, you can go back and watch our testimony uh, from the thumbnail says from night to day, uh, mm-hmm. and so you can see that back in our in our older videos. But um, it was my senior year of high school. You guys were in the eighth grade. No, seventh, oh, grade. seventh grade. Seventh grade. Yeah. You guys were in the seventh grade, uh, having just entered uh, junior high. Uh, I was in my senior year of high school. God yeah. just gripped my heart. There was a series of events, a lot of stuff going on in my mind as I was recognizing I was about to come, become a young man, 17 years old. Mm. Um, I'm just a few months out from turning 18, about to graduate high school. And the question of my heart was, what? Now what? Yeah. What was coming next? Mm-hmm. And... I hadn't really decided what I was going to do with my life. I didn't know if I was going to go to college. I didn't know if I was 
and even if I did go to college, what was I going to work toward? What, what kind of degree was I going to, what kind of career was I going to work towards? I didn't know any of that stuff. I was just kind of, you know, just living, you know, mm-hmm. just working my little part-time job, going to high school, just living. And, um, senior year of high school, God gripped my heart, woke me up and started, started helping me ask the right questions, which led me to say, you know what? I can't continue thinking like a kid anymore because I'm not a kid. This is where Paul talks about. We got to get off the milk and onto the meat. You know, I used to think, think like a child. I'm no longer a child anymore. I'm becoming a grown man. Uh, and got to man up. Uh, yeah, it really, no, seriously, <laughs> spiritually and, and, and literally, like sure. yeah, I got to man up. I've got to, I've got to start thinking because I'm not always going to live with my parents. Yep. And I've got to start thinking about my future. But that that brought a little bit of anxiety to me. Because I'm like, I don't, I don't have anybody here step by step bringing me through mm-hmm. some step by step walk. Like, okay, you got to go do this first, and then go do that. And no one's buying me a house. No one's getting me into an apartment. No one's getting me a high paying job. Like nobody done that. And and and, and again, you know, I, I give a shout out to my parents, even though my parents didn't do all these things for me. I appreciate that because I learned, I learned how to develop an an independent mentality. Yeah. That that nobody's gonna go out here and do this for you. You got to do it yourself. That led me with some. Uh, I also had a little bit of a health scare. Um, my senior year of high school, I had a, a, an appendix situation uh, that could have been potentially dangerous because of how it all went, how it all uh, played out. But I ended up in the hospital. I just remember, all, with all of these thoughts, all of the anxiety in my life, God was. I could feel God was gravitating me towards this moment mm-hmm. where where He's basically like, you know, all or nothing. What are you going to do? Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to continue down the road you're going? Yeah laying in the hospital bed, middle of the hospital in Jonesboro, Arkansas, scared that I'm not going to come out of this surgery or scared that something's going to happen and it's going to like de- de- uh, debilitate me the rest of my the rest of my life. Um, I remember saying a prayer in that hospital, just as sincere as I ever have. Lord, if you can get me through this, mm. and you can bring me out on the other side, better, healed, strong, ready to move forward. I'll give my life to you and I'll take I'll take you more seriously. Mm. I'll give you and I'll give you a chance. Yeah. And for you know what, I'm waking up in the recovery room. Everything went well. You're good to go, Mr. Day. Praise, Praise the God. Lord. Yeah. So it took me maybe a few weeks to kind of get my act together, but I found I purchased me a Bible, my own Bible, my own personal Bible. Mm. Started studying that Bible more intently, trying to understand mm-hmm. it. In the beginning, can't I go understand in the beginning everything in the beginning? Yeah. But at least I started putting forward the effort. Yeah. Had more conversations with Dad. It's, you know, I st- you remember us having conversations in the living room and getting into some things. And I started watching more videos. Um, and started just really in, in, investing more of my time in the less video games mm-hmm. and more studying the Bible. And so from there, God took me on a journey where I would enter, I would leave high school, enter into college. And over the next, I would say probably over the next two and a half years, the Lord really, really developed within me this strong you know, the Bible says, oh, taste and see, Psalm, Psalm 34. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I, I was I was experiencing that. And, and so over the next two and a half years, God brought me to a place where I was like, okay, this is, a, this is, this is real. This is no longer just some, you know, like I believe yeah. God is real. Not only that he's just a real person, but his, we can trust his word. And now that I had learned enough to be able to now hold conversations, to now even start preaching and teaching and start trying to help people understand the Bible that I've come to understand, there was a strong desire in my heart to now minister to others that I love. Yeah. Of course, when you when you come to that thought, who who are you going to choose? Random people? No, you're going to go to those people that mean the most to you. Mm-hmm. So I remember talking to my friend Zach Williams, you know, yep. really really trying to witness to him, mm-hmm. and and even even to you at that time, even though prior to my conversion, you and I, as we said previously before, kind of had a rocky. Uh, you know, a rocky relationship based on both of our selfishness, primarily mine. And then as, as a result of my selfishness, you became very selfish. And we both just had a kind of a rocky uh, adolescence, I guess you could say. But it came to the time when I started seeing you, you know, you're my little brother. I love you. Your your soul and your 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 fate, your eternal fate matter to me. Mm-hmm. And so I remember I started talking a little bits to you and in the beginning you know you were kind of like eh, you know we kind of wishy-washy about it. you would listen yeah. i could tell you were a little disconnect uh but then uh i think it was i think it was 2000 maybe 2011 2010 2011 um or maybe 2012 2012 that's what it was 2012 yeah is when well 2010 i was baptized you were baptized yeah but so you I, didn't totally well 
I, I was still in I was still in in school, right. and I still had a lot of the world to battle with. You yeah. had graduated at this point, mm -hmm. so you didn't. You were kind of out and didn't have all of the pull of the world and pull of the school and all of the distractions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I I, I kind of gave my life to Jesus, but then I didn't stay with Jesus. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was my problem. Yeah. So yeah. So from so 20, 2010 to twenty twelve, you 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 believed in God. I mean, mm -hmm. you were you would talk about Him. You yeah. Know, when, when conversations opened up, but you weren't really into it. And I was trying to witness to you in a way to hope to 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 get your your you know your 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 taste to want to to want to learn and want to mm. grow. Yeah. You're hungering for it more. And so I would have these little nugget conversations with you. Mm -hmm. And I think it was 2012, fall of 2012, somewhere around there is when I remember you came to a Bible study one night with us and I shared with you a set of DVDs that had really changed my life, which mm -hmm. was the Lee Vinden All About Jesus Revival Seminar. Yeah. And I gave you that set of DVDs and I was like, Dakota, you need to watch these. And yeah. I don't know how long it was between the time I gave it to you for the time you watched them. It but, was a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember you called me up one day or, or we, we had met or something and you were like, dude, now watch that. Watch that first leave in. And, and, and dude, it's like you were expressing to me that yeah. something positive was happening in your mind. And dude, that just, that meant the world to me, bro. Mm. I was just like praising God. Like, Lord, please, please. I remember praying like, Lord, please, please let my little brother see his need and his importance of, of taking his relationship with God seriously. Yeah. Because he's in his senior year of high school. He's still got all these tugs and pulls, and, and, and I've been there. I know how that is, but yet he's got his own battles, and he's got his own struggles. And you got you too, Jordan. I mean, you're, you're in Manila at this time. Dakota's in Black Rock. You know, even though we live near in the same region of Northeast Arkansas, we yeah. were in total different places living at this time because God had led our families in different mm -hmm. places. And uh, I just remember praying that prayer, like, God, please, you know, please awaken that spark within him. And I started seeing it. Every single time I would talk to him, he was a little bit more... Mm. More vibrant, more more aware, more awakened to spiritual things, more interested to talk. And then lo and behold, one day, Dakota tells me, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to church. I'm going back to church at, at Bassett with dad and mom, which was a little, you know, for our viewers that are watching or listening, Bassett is a small town in ba in Arkansas, Bassett, Arkansas, Mississippi County. It's where our dad grew up. Uh, we had started a little family church, a little non-denominational Sabbath-keeping family church. Okay. And, and uh and I remember you told me one day, like, I'm going to start going to church there. And I, and I thought that was odd because I had already been going to, and we were in Northeast Arkansas, I already started going to the local Seventh-day Adventist church mm -hmm. there in Pocahontas, Arkansas. And I was like, man, back to back to Bassett because we were there. And I kind of felt like we 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 ex we, we wore that that out. We already exercised yeah. that. Now it's time mm -hmm. to move on. But you told me that. And, but still, at the same time, I was just like, you know what? I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I don't care if it's Bassett. Or 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 under an olive tree somewhere. I'm just glad that he's happy and that he's that he's that he's he's, he's interested in spiritual things. Well, then like one week goes by, another week goes by, and then he tells me, uh, Dakota calls me up and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, man, we've we've got this Bible study." He started asking me Bible questions, like so. So I'm teaching on this, and I was thinking about doing it. We're doing this Bible study, so I have a question for you. And he would call me up and ask me a question, and and then I asked him, I was like, "Well, who?" Because I was thinking like, "Who who in the world are you who, who, who are you talking to?" Who's going to this? Who's at this Bible study? Because I'm thinking it's got to be him, Anna, and maybe one other person from Bassett. And then he's telling me he's got like half a dozen people that he's bringing from Manila to Bassett, which perked me up. And I'm like, wait, you got you actually got a group yeah. of young people coming here? Several of his friends, uh, Arturo and Andrew, and I think you had come maybe a, a few times. I don't know if you'd come at this point. Oh, he was he was there. Yeah. 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 And, and, he, was, he was the first one I talked to. And we had like two or three other young yeah. ladies coming, and, and of course Anna. And and when you told me that, I was like, dude, this is cool. Like all these young people coming. You didn't together. even have that going on at your church. No, I no, I couldn't. <laughs> no, I, didn't. I mean, we had a few young people, but not not yeah. that going on with, with with teenagers. Yeah. And so I just remember telling Dakota, I was like, well, look, bro, like I would love to just come down and join you in your Bible study if you're cool with that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, come on down. I was like, all right. So we go down to Bassett, and there's this room full of young people. I'm like, praise God, in this little podunk. Yeah. Like you guys got to see this. This is like you. This is like your great 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 grandmother's church that don't even have heating and air conditioning yet. I mean, it's just like it was pole dunk. Like back, this church was built back in like the 30s. Yeah, it was an old church. Old, old church. Old church, old church. And so here yeah. are all these young people on fire around this table studying the Bible. And and not to say anything negative about you, you you were doing your best, but you didn't have like a plan. You didn't have like a like a. You were just kind of taking on topics. That I you didn't were know learning. what I was doing. I wasn't doing topics actually. I was actually. I was inspired by Lee Vinden's All About Jesus Revival Seminar. So what I did is I just began in the book of Matthew. Okay. And yeah. I was re we just would read through. You remember that, Jordan? Mm -hmm. 
we would just read through Matthew and I was just kind of facilitating, you know, the talk and discussion and all of us would talk about stuff, but I was kind of like teaching the best I knew, like what, what Jesus would emphasize, you know, something I would, I would say, you know, this is why this is important. And, you know, I was, I didn't know what I was doing really, but I, I was so sincere about trying to, yeah. I'm going to let you continue on that because that, because I've brought us up to Mm -hmm. where you're on fire now. You're, you're, you're yeah. excited about spiritual things. You've got this group. So talk, talk about how they well, developed. Well, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rewind it real, for, okay. real quick for a moment. So I'm going to take us back to like when I graduated. Because I think for young people that might be watching this, like you may have had the same experience Ryan had where you're like, man, reality is starting to hit me in the face, right? Because that's what happened with me too. My senior year is I was applying for uh, grants and scholarships and all of this. Um, I mean, I had good grades. Uh, I wasn't, you know... I wasn't a 4.0 student, but I was a 3.0 student and I had good grades and I was applying for grants and scholarships and stuff. And, and I remember, um, I basically, um, I basically, every time I would apply for one, it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Like nothing felt right. And like, you know, in in school, when you go to school, like they, they just, they, they brand it within your mind and beat it within your mind that if you want to be anything in this world, right, you need to go to college you need to get a high paying job, right? You need to, you gotta, you gotta, gotta go to college. You gotta get a degree. You gotta get a high paying job. And then once you do all that, you'll be able to live the American dream, have the nice, uh, big two story house, the white picket fence, big jacked up truck, nice sports car, hot wife, all of those things. <laughs> and you know, and then you call that the American dream. You're successful because all of those things, because if you working hard to get get a good career, is gonna bring you happiness. Yeah. Like that's the kind of yeah. idea. Yeah. And and I, I was starting to realize like. What Jesus had said, because I've been reading in I've been reading in my Bible a lot. I had really God my senior year in high school, God was really convicting me, kind of for the same reasons. Like reality was starting to hit me. Like all this is about to get real. And I wanted to be a history professor in college. I, my goal was to go and teach college history. Like that's what I was actually wanting to do. But um along the way, God had a different plan. And so fast forward, I um every time I would apply, like Mark eight thirty six those famous words of Jesus where he said, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world but lose his own soul? Like that just haunted me. Mm-hmm. Anna was applying for stuff. I was applying for stuff. Like everything was just haunting me. And I was like, so what if I become this great successful businessman or whatever? Like there's no way that's going to get bring me anything in the long run. Like mm-hmm. when I get old and I die, like then what? Like mm-hmm. like I'm forgotten about. You know, I'm I'm... I'm not there. I have no purpose. And and so anyways, that was kind of what led me to start realizing, like, I need to figure out a better purpose in my life. Something's going to give me purpose. And God's word just kept calling back to me. So after I watched the Leave Inden set, I'd graduated high school by then. I just graduated high school, and you came to me with that, that set. It was like, dude, you got to watch this set. And I remember what happened. I came to your Bible study that you guys had at the church, and I just opened up and talked to you about how, like, I wanted to serve God. I want to do something, but I don't know what it is. And and you kept trying to get me to come there and join the church there. And I was like, no, nah, man, I, I, I remember telling you, I don't want anything to do with denominationalism. Yeah. I don't want anything yeah. to do. I don't want organized religion. I don't want anything to do with it. All of them are hypocrites. All of them got problems. Like, I remember telling you that whole thing. And you were like, you were like, yeah, all of us are hypocrites. Like, all of us got problems. That's right. Like, you know, we're all problems, you know, but Jesus is going to help us. And you were trying your best, but you just weren't there. Yet. I just wasn't there just yet. There. I wasn't there to grow and, and I needed to figure things out on my own. So fast forward. As I was reading and studying God's word, God just convicted me like, Dakota, you're learning this great truth. Like, you got it. And that was part of the, the journey. God, in, in that series from Leave Inden, he, he taught something. I know you guys remember. He said, you, you have to have three legs to a stool for it to stand. And he said, you have to maintain a relationship with Jesus through personal Bible study and mm-hmm. prayer, be the second leg. And then you have to share that. Mm-hmm. Well, I had been having personal Bible study every day and I had been praying every day to God. God was moving in my life. But then he was like, you got to share it for that to stay alive and for you to be used by God, right? For that relationship to remain meaningful to you. And so I was like, yeah, you know, like our desire to share this. And then I also realized like I had the world still in my heart too. Mm-hmm. And there was things I needed to give up, things I needed to move on with. And and then I got thinking, I got to go tell my friends about this. And at the time, me and Jordan was really close. Like mm-hmm. we were super close. We hung out all the time. We talked all the time on the phone. We were into all kinds of heathen things and all this stuff, you know, that we shouldn't have <laughs> been doing. But I remember, like, like sometimes me and Jordan, what we used to do for fun was go to Sonic Drive-In, order, he would always order cheese fry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget. I would order, um, I'd order chili cheese fries and a, a mozzarella stick, 
And we after while we were there eating and stuff, we would just see who can insult each other the worst. Like we would just cuss. <laughs> we would. We would just. We just cuss each other out. So like, I would like cuss him out in the most creative way I could cuss him out, and then he would cuss me out. And we did it like being friends. Like we wasn't mad at each other, but we that would just so be funny. like, "What do you made. think about that?" Beep 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 beep. And then like, and then he would say something back. Like <laughs> we were very heathen, you know. So like. And, but Jordan so knew funny. along the way, Jordan knew that I had beliefs, but I just mm -hmm. was really in the world and not really following all mm -hmm. my beliefs. And so, like, you know, I had certain doctrinal beliefs, that is. And anyways, I remember going to Jordan's house and sitting down with him and talking with him about how God had been moving in my life. And I said, man, I got you know some things I just want to share with you. So I, I started giving him a Bible study. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I had no training. I was just a young man who realized God was doing something in my life. And I started talking with him. And Jordan, like, surprisingly, and I was scared to have this conversation with Jordan. Mm. And, and by the way, you might be scared to share Jesus with your friends. And this was me. I was terrified because Jordan was my best friend at the time. We were the closest. I didn't want yeah. to, I didn't and, want to and, lose him as a friend. And religion is one of those things that can either bring you together yes. or it can separate you yeah. really exactly. quickly. Yeah. I didn't want to lose him as a friend. So I was like, man, if I tell, and Jordan was this type of person too. Jordan was like, if we lose stuff in common, like, Jordan was that type of person, like, He'll just tell you, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to hang out. Like, I don't want to. Like, if, if I said, hey, Jordan, you want to go skateboarding? If he didn't want to do it, he just wouldn't do it just because I, I wanted to do it. He would just be like, no, nah, I'm good. You know, so <laughs> like, you, <laughs> I knew he was going to be like very quick and honest with me. Like, no, nope, Dakota, this is this is you. This ain't me. Like, I don't, I'm not interested. You know, I knew he was going to tell me one way or the other. And I was terrified because I knew I was like sold out at this point. Like, I'm going to make this decision. But if Jordan doesn't, I'm going to lose a friend. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose a friend because we're not going to have anything in common anymore. So I just sit down and told him, I was like, look, man, God's changing my life. And there's some things I've been doing and been practicing that I'm not going to be doing anymore. And I just opened up with him. And I just, I didn't know what to share. I just started sharing what it was that started to help me to open my eyes to things of, mm -hmm. of what was, what Christianity was missing, basically. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that came to my heart at the time. So as I started sharing this with Jordan, Jordan, I'll let you yeah, pick yeah, it up. Tell, tell us from your perspective now. Him, yeah. Him, that visit onward. So yeah, that, that first Bible study, uh, I remember very clearly. Yeah, you begin to, I remember you sharing that with me, saying, you know, hey, man, I got something really important I want to share with you that I've been wanting to share with you, but I've been waiting to do it, and I and I didn't know what he was going to, I was like, did he do something wrong? Well, George, see, we, God has given me the ability to take up serpents, and uh, I would like to share <laughs> <laughs> Just I didn't know if he, like, got somebody pregnant, or like, I, you know, I'm like thinking, like, maybe he did something, you know, like, he's, this is like, this is big, you know. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember he came over with, like that weekend with a Bible and a notebook in his hand. So I was like, okay, this is different. Now, from my, to a little bit of my story, I, I wasn't really raised in church, yeah. just raised in the world. I never gave God a thought in the day. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any Bible stories. I was raised a pretty decent kid, you know. My dad yeah. tried to, he taught me definitely what was right and wrong to, you know, at least the world standards right. of right and wrong. So I knew better in certain right. things, but... Totally ignorant of the Bible, totally ignorant of even thinking about who God is. If you would have asked me in high school, do you believe that there is God? I would have said, sure, yeah, there is there is a God. But I didn't know anything about him, never talked to him, never gave him a thought in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to me with the Bible, I wasn't closed to right. the idea. I wasn't like opposed to religion. I just, it wasn't a part of my life. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I mean, Dakota was my friend, so I'm going to hear him out. And I remember him taking me like, a, I mean, like long Bible study, like, Probably like a two hour, two or three hours. Bible, just him Bible just, study, yeah. We're sitting in my room and he's just talking and going through some history and and all these different things. And most of it was over my head, you know. But I did see certain things that he was saying, like, oh, "Okay, I, I can see that. I, yeah, it kind of makes sense." And I just remember him making that appeal at the end of the study, like, "Hey, there's gonna be some things that we do together that we're not gonna be able to do anymore." <laughs> yeah. And you know, I'm gonna I'm following the Lord and I'm gonna walk with Him. And there's more to learn, of course, in the Bible. And basically, he just made an appeal. Do you? want to join me as I've studied the Bible, you know, start getting to know God and learn more. And and I, I remember when he asked me that question, you know, I felt the tug of the Holy Spirit on my heart. I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was at the time, but... There was I, conviction there. Conviction of like, oh, you need to do this. You know, I felt that, that little voice tell mm -hmm. me, you need to do this. So there was that, but then there was also the tug like, well, I don't want to hurt... Dakota seems passionate about this. It seems important to him, so I don't want to hurt his feelings. And I didn't really think it was going to go anywhere. You know, I didn't actually think it was going to be yeah. what it is today. I just thought maybe he'll forget about <laughs> little this. Phase, little phase. Is going yeah, through. it's just a part, you know. And, and so we'll be back to old, old times again. Sure. Yeah. So, sure, why not? So, 
That's it's what funny I said. because he thought that about you what you thought about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, All right, go ahead. so then I was just like, okay, sure. Why not? You know, and I yeah. remember him saying, I don't remember how long it was. Maybe you remember. You're like, I'm going to start. It was like the next week. Was it the next week? It was week? the very next week. I, yeah. I had already planned to reach out to you, yeah. Arturo, uh-huh. Dude, Andrew, I remember, all my friends. I remember he called me up like a day or two, a few days before. And he told me, he's like, I need you to be praying because I'm going to mm. go talk to Jordan. I'm, I'm meeting with Jordan. It was a big thing to him. Like he, mm. it's just something, it wasn't something that he took lightly. It wasn't yeah. like one in a day he was just like, I'm going to talk to Jordan about this. Let him yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. Like it was something, something big he was working yeah. up to. Cause he he really he really valued you and really really liked loved you as a brother and a friend and and I remember he called me up and he's like brother as I, I'm I'm meeting with Jordan on this day um be be praying because I'm just gonna really appeal to his heart just pray that Jordan yeah. sees him mm. so I, I was praying yeah and then and then wow. so he was he was he was really leading up to this moment so he was really banking mm. on like Lord please please let Jordan receive this yeah yeah so. so you had anything else so yeah I was just gonna say yeah then we go ahead we started studying the Bible together and. Yeah, and man, I just I remember specifically in the studies when you showed up as we started going through the Sermon on the Mount, you know, going yeah. through Matthew and first time reading the words of Jesus and just continuing to study. And it went from once a week to two times a week to yeah. three times a week, and we just began to really just immerse ourselves in God's Word. And and yeah, man, the Lord just began to change change my mm-hmm. heart and change my life. And yeah, and that Lee Vinden series, you know, you gave it to us as well, everybody who and that. Was so impactful. Yeah. Um, well, we we eventually, uh, and, and and I don't know if there's something you want to say about yeah. what he just said, but what yeah. we're gravitating towards is, I show up to that little Bible study, and it's you, and Arturo, and and Andrew, and Jordan, and several of these young people, and I'm just like, man, there's something going on here. Yeah. Exactly what we learned in the third episode of Leave Ending, because in that episode, Born Twice, yeah, where he's talking about how to be born again and how that happens, yeah, uplifting Christ. Intercessory prayer. The intercessory prayer mm, works. Yeah, I'm seeing it play out. I'm like, man, mm. these, these young people like they don't have to be well, here. It's a Saturday. Yeah. They don't have to be here. They could be doing anything. They could be shopping. They yeah. could be like they're here studying. And so I, I remember. I think I came like maybe two or three weeks Did in I a row. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we, then I remember finally I appealed to you. I was like, I was like, man, bro, like. And I'm just being honest. You I'm said just, it was closer to us to, to go to where you were at at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw I was I was but but <laughs> I had another agenda in mind. But, I know you but, did. But yeah. but my thoughts were is that at that time, and I'm, and I'm not trying to bad mouth or say anything negative. At that time, Bassett didn't have anything that was really going to be long lasting for young people. There. Yeah, it just no, wasn't. It wasn't. It, it was just a little spot we were meeting as a family, and it just didn't have anything special. Yeah, that could be that could provide proper proper growth. Sure. For yeah. the young people, so I appealed to Dakota. And I was like, man, like, what what if what if because at the time. You guys were living in in Pocahontas. I was living in uh, in in uh, Lake City with Brandy, uh, and I which just is our sister, our sister, our Brandy. sister Brandy. That's right, Brandy. <laughs> Shout out to Brandy. Thank you, Brandy, for hosting us. It was such a yes. blessing. Yeah. So she she joined. Um, so when we met at her house, her too. and Daniel and and at the time her kids were very little, Gavin and Trinity. But um, yeah, she joined us. And you know the idea. I didn't think it was ever going to become what it was, but. When I, after I met with Jordan, I went and I I remember I met with all the other friends. I remember me and Jordan. Jordan came to some Bible studies first, and then me and him went and talked to Arturo together. Yeah. Remember that we drove around his truck. Yep, we remember. talked with him, and then uh, of course I'd already reached out to Andrew, so Andrew was coming. I went and knocked on Andrew's door, and I was like, "Brother, listen, God's doing something in my life, and I know this is random." I just randomly showed up at his door. <laughs> <laughs> his parents were like, "Oh, hey, Dakota," and then Andrew comes to the door. He's like, "What's up, man?" And I'm like, "Yeah, man, it's been a while since we really you know hung out and mm-hmm. chatted." I was like, "But I wanted to." I wanted to share with you what God's been doing in my life, and so He listened, and and I told Him I was like, man, it would mean the world to me just to have you there at this at the uh, at the Bible study, and and He's like, He's like, you know what, Dakota? He's like, I'll be there, man. He's like, I'll be there, and so He did, and he, he ended up bringing his sisters. Yeah, I remember um, his sisters, Catherine and Kristen. They ended up coming some to the study, and um, we just I don't know. We were all meeting, and God was just working yeah. so powerfully in these small group Bible studies. We wasn't yeah. professional, no. like, but me and you would interchange out. Yeah. I would lead out some weeks, and then. You would lead out some weeks, and then we would just, you know, we were just studying. And what was so amazing about our small group Bible study that I remember, we wasn't doing topical studies all the time. We didn't start off that way. We started off, well, we eventually got to more deeper stuff, but we started off just focusing on Jesus. That's it. That's it. And him and his loveliness, his As relationship. Mo- 
John chapter 3, verse 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall yeah. also the Son of Man be lifted up. Yeah. John, John 12, 32. And I, if I am be lifted up, I will draw, draw all me. people and, to myself. And so I want to I talk about, because I remember very vividly how everything transitioned from there. I want to talk about this for a moment. This is powerful. This, this is a, historically for me, this is probably one of the most powerful moments I remember God moving in my life and moving in mm -hmm. the lives of everyone around me. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you some contrast, like in these Bible studies, I didn't know this until years later, but Michael, your stepdad at the time, he, he ended up fixing my truck years later, back in like 2018, he worked on my truck. And while he was working on my truck, he come to me. Like he walked up to me like in the, I went, well, actually I, I dropped off my truck to him. And then he had to go do something, and he came back, and he goes, you know, Dakota, and, and this was Michael, he said, Michael, he said, Dakota, I just want to, I want to thank you. And I, I was so confused. I'm like, for what? He's like, I just want to thank you, man, for what you've done in, in Jordan's life. I was like, well, brother, I didn't do anything in Jordan's life. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, but man, you started sharing the Bible with him. He's like, dude, he said, I had never in my life seen anybody change so fast, and I could agree with him on that. Yeah, because let's like, talk dude, real quickly. I'm not trying to, like, to... To, to praise your old lifestyle. That's not the point. But before then, I mean, yeah. you were hanging out with bad, like rough crowds. I mean, very worldly, mm -hmm. maybe into some drugs. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's not like you were just like this little kid at home sitting playing video games all the time. <laughs> you were you were hanging out with some some pretty rough guys that uh -huh. were were doing things that were basically illegal. <laughs> right. And and so to see that transition, that was something I remember when Dakota told, called me. It was like you know, pray for me. I'm gonna go talk to Jordan. I didn't know a lot, but I knew a little bit because Dakota had told me some stuff, you know. And I remember thinking to myself, not anyway, it's probably a little bit of doubt, but I remember thinking to myself, like, man, it's going to be a miracle. Hmm. It's going to be a miracle if God mm -hmm. gets that kid because that kid's yeah. so like, I love Jordan, but he's like, you, you could just tell by well, your attitude we when both I was around were you. Like, so just, steeped yeah, in the world, man. The world. Like, I'm like, man, it's going to be a miracle if that brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and when he calls me, dude. Said, he was so happy, dude, when he called me uh -huh. after the end. He's like, bro, he's like, bro. George, it went okay, good, man. It went good, and George, Jordan's gonna join us for study, and and I was just like, I was just amazed. I was like, what? I was like, he really? He said yes. <laughs> yeah, like, amen. What blew me away was what Michael said to me. He goes, he said, he said, he said, no, nah, man, you don't understand, because I saw changes in you to some degree, but what I didn't see was your home life. Michael saw that, and Michael, Michael said, he said, no, you don't understand, bro. He said that first Bible study. I, he's like, he's like, Vicky told me which is your mom, that Jordan was going to a Bible study with Dakota. He's like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? A Bible study? He's like, I couldn't believe it. He's like, so I was like, all right, well, great. That's good, you know? He's like, dude, he come back that same night from that first Bible study y'all had. He said, he said, you remember that room y'all play games in all the time? So yeah, he goes, man, he had like Wiz Khalifa posters, smoke weed, and half-naked ladies and everything <laughs> on, the, on the walls. He's like, he's like, no, Jordan came in, took those posters down, and put up pictures of Scripture all over his the room he's like dude <laughs> i had god. never seen that praise god and he man. and i said bro i said michael i'll tell you man it wasn't me i said that was god working in jordan's life i said i said all i did was sow a seed man i was just trying to reach out to my friend i was like but god did that work i said i it's just amazing amazing miracle so yeah, transition god, though to to what happened and all of us were meeting there's like at least a dozen of us we had been a meeting dozen for almost yeah. 15 people, a dozen yeah. 15 people. 12 15 yeah meeting not we started out once a week once a week right and then and we, we got went to, to twice, twice a week and then three, three times. times a week. Yeah. And we, we started out watching the Leave Inning series. Yeah. We, we right. kept saying, like, we guys got to watch this. We watched all the way through yep. the Leave Inning series yep. together. And we started having Bible discussions, yeah. uh, focusing on Christ, mm -hmm. the life of Christ, the character of Christ. We, for the first time in my life, I was seeing transformation happening before my eyes that I'd never seen. Not yeah. just in my own life, but I was seeing it in others. Yeah. It. <sighs> Well, bro, man, it what, it, 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 it tore what, me up in a good what way. What hit me and hap what happened in such a powerful way was I remember I remember this one night. This this is what really changed so much for me. This one night, and I, I, maybe Jordan, you remember this too, but I remember very vividly. This one day, we did a we, we had a we. And by the way, I remember what the process that we did. We did Bible study first, study God's word first, and then we would have like a game night, like afterwards, yeah. like we'd play like games or something and do something board games or something. And I remember um, that night. There wasn't any games. Mm -hmm. It was just like all wow. discussion. And what happened was really beautiful. You 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 ask everyone to write down on a sheet of paper. I remember you pass around a sheet of paper and you ask everyone to write down whether or not they think they would be ready. Like if Jesus was to come right now, do you think you'd be ready to? Do you think you'd be ready for his coming? Do you think you'd make it? 
I don't know if you remember. Do you remember this? I remember it. And you passed it around. And so everybody like put down their answer and then you got it back. And you were like, and by the way, like we didn't, we didn't look at each other's answers. It was just kind of like, you know, you just no, wrote. I had everybody just yeah. put their answer, but they're not their name. Not their name. Yeah. Because I so, was going to read the answers yeah. without identifying who it was from. So we passed that sheet of paper around. It came back to you and you read, yes, 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 yes. You said, okay, so everybody thinks they're, they're ready to go. And, and we're all like, yeah, you know, like we've been studying. We're and then ready we did again. a Bible study. Well, no, no. What happened was was yeah we did a bible study did and then we prayed study, and then we prayed and then you said okay pray and then after that bible study we prayed you did it again i handed it out the you handed it same out bible study and then the answers came back different all of them were different no 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 and that wasn't to take away our assurance yeah. it was just to help us we had realized like our lives though we had been doing study was not lining up with what you know we had a things. false we had a false misconception of of what it meant to really follow Christ. Exactly. What it meant to, to be exactly. Commit, committed to him and devoted to him. Yes. And that was the point of that study was yes. that God had showed me that even though I used to tell people when they'd ask me at school, are you a believer? Yeah, I'm a believer. Do you believe in God? Yeah, I'm a, are you saved? Are you saved? I'm saved. I got saved back in, you know, 1998, yeah. you know, whatever. That was the mentality. But I wasn't really following. I was living like a heathen, but mm -hmm. I'm saved. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to get out is like, it's easy to throw those words around. Yeah. Like, I believe in God. Mm hmm you know, I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a say I'm saved. You know, I'm a Christian. Yeah. But when you really look at what the gospel requires, mm. which again is not perfection in the absolute sense, because only God is totally yeah. absolutely perfect. But certainly commitment. Commitment. That's what we're getting. That's he, the word. He, he wants commitment. He wants. Yeah. He wants you. You know, Jesus says, if you desire to come, you know, if you desire to follow me, you know, deny yourself, take yeah. up your cross daily, and then follow me. Yeah, like that's essentially what we were getting at is trying to understand that. So when I and, when I did that Bible study, I remember I, those those answers came back. No, 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 all across the board. Yeah, you know, and I, I can't remember if it was at that point or later, at some point in our study, the, the two things that were most impactful for me were was the leave ending, and and we then we watched on that note that you just said we watched not a fan, mm. and it, it talked about being the a difference between being a follower of Jesus and a fan of Jesus. Fans come to church on the weekend and cheer for Jesus, but when it comes to making real sacrifices and commitment, even in hard times, fans go home. Mm, yeah, and you remember we watched that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And that was really for me. That was like that helped me see, like, okay, this is what it really means. This is what Jesus is really calling me to. This is what it really means to be a Christian. Amen. So that was for me. Those are the two things that stick out the yeah. most. Well, that's what we focused on. Yeah, and which ultimately, once we got through yeah. with the, the Leave In and series, and we went through the not a fan series. Once we got through that, uh, this is where the change change really took a turn in my life. Zach Williams during that time, I don't know if y'all remember, he was at AFCO. Yep. Mm -hmm. Remember that was the yep. fall of 2012. 2012. Yeah. And I would get a phone call from him, uh, you know, at least once or twice a week. And he just going on and on about, man, dude, my life's changing. And like, man, you got to come to AFCO. You got to come to AFCO. And in my mind, at the time, again, a little bit of pride. It, 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 I was still growing, so I wasn't there yet, obviously. Still not. But just at that time, for sure, I was not even close. But a um, little bit of pride crept in, and I was like, you know, Zach had quit college to go to AFCO. I wasn't about to work all that that much, all that hard, all put all those years in and just drop, drop out of college. Yeah. So not only was I not going to drop out of college, I was going to finish my undergrad degree. And then he wants me to go to a four-month school, you know, and I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm going to take the more sophisticated route. I'm going to go to seminary. If I'm going to go somewhere and receive training, I'm going to go to seminary. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to seminary. I remember we all went. We all loaded up yeah. and, and decided to go to Andrews because I'd ask you Is guys, it, like, what, yeah. what do y'all want to do from here? We all started having that conversation. It wasn't but, decisive yet. But that same night, though, that you passed out that sheet of paper, uh -huh. I don't know if you remember, you, you made an appeal and you said, I'm tired of slaving for man. Yes. Mm. And you said, I don't know about you guys. I'm tired of slaving for man. I don't want to slave for man anymore. I want to slave for Jesus. That's right. Yeah. And when you said that, it was like a revelation to all of us. We were like, yeah, that's right. And, and you, you even said this. You said, guys, we've been meeting for like three months. For what? I remember you said that. For what? We're just going to do Bible study? And I'm like, yeah, where is this actually going? Like, yeah. what are we going to do with yeah. our lives? And, 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 and I, and I want to make just a real quick thing for our viewers. That's not to say that if you do something to make a living that's not in ministry, that that's yeah. bad. Yeah, not, not, not the case. I'm not saying that wasn't my But God point. was leading us in that direction. Exactly. God yeah. was God had lit a fire in me because I was planning on leaving college and going to be yeah. a teacher. And I'm for the first time now, here I am like, I'm literally just a couple of months out from finishing college. Mm -hmm. 
my whole my whole undergrad degree, planning on going into teaching at a local school somewhere, and now God's got He's done a little fire in me that that says I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, that's not my plan. Wow, hmm. like I'm loving what we're like. I was I was the happiest, bro. Bro, I don't think <laughs> you understand. Between those Bible studies, I was pouring myself into Bible study. Monday, Tuesday, went all around those Bible studies. I would spend hours and hours to prepare for those studies. Yeah. I was watching, I was reading, I was I was pouring myself into this and I found myself I wasn't doing I wasn't finding it to be a task like oh man, I got to I got to study for this cuz we got to you know, we got to study tomorrow night. Yeah. No, I was like I couldn't wait. Like I was on fire so much. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I know you hear me talking about this as if that's once what it was and it's not that any- no, I still get this way. Mm-hmm. When I when I'm when I'm preparing something today, I'm preparing to share with someone, to teach someone a Bible study, a sermon. I don't look at it like, oh, I've got to go study. No, I'm still today on fire for the Lord, just like I was back then. That fire's mm-hmm. never left me. Yeah. But I was feeling that fire hard and strong for the first mm-hmm. time in my life. So I came to the conclusion. I remember I met with Steph and we talked. And I came to the conclusion. I was like, Steph, look, you know, I, I can't. I know we're together in this. But I, I don't know that I want to go into teaching. Like, if I'm going to give my life. I want, I want to give my life to the Lord, not just part of the way and 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 not not full time, but doing something else. Like I have a passion to teach. Mm-hmm. I have a passion to want to share Christ with others. Yeah. And I don't think I'm ever going to be happy with anything other than that. Yeah. And so I talked to that with her and and and, and we, we we talked about some things and she was like, well, you know, whatever the whatever you feel the Lord has led you to do, I'll stand behind you on that and, and I'll, I'll join you in the journey. Mm. That was just so encouraging to me. So that's what led to that night. Mm. The next time we met, at mm-hmm. the very end, I was like, what, where are we going? What are we doing? Yeah. And I can't speak for you guys, but what I was trying to say, because honestly, I did not expect all you guys to join me. I didn't expect that. I was expecting you guys to be like, you know, well, that's great, man. We're happy for you, but we got to go live our lives. And I respected that, and it's fine. I was just more or less trying to set you guys up for the fact that I'm not going to be here very long. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be here until God sends me somewhere else, wherever that may be, Andrews. Yeah. AFCO, wherever it was. Mm-hmm. And that night was amazing because like more than half the room, mm-hmm. you, Jordan, uh, at that time, our like, wives. Even, even Andrew and Arturo yeah. and, 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 yeah. and our wives. And it was amazing to see everybody like, you know what? Yeah. yeah like, like let's, let's do, let's go for this. Let's, yeah. Why go, why just go part of the way and then just go back to, to doing whatever. Like, why not just fully devote ourselves to ministry? Yeah. Dude. There was a there was an a, there was a spiritual atomic bomb that that let loose in that room that night, and 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 I'll never forget it. What is what is the what is the word for <laughs> power that you you shall receive power of the Holy Spirit? That's that word, dunamis. Dunamis, which That's is right. dynamite. It's dynamite. So God bro. lit a bomb he of the Holy did, Spirit bro. and just dropped it up in that room. <laughs> so we tried the whole yeah. Andrews thing first. I remember all of us went up to Andrews. Yep. yep. And. Our prayer, I don't know if y'all remember this, because we prayed before we went, and yep. then our prayer was, Lord, if this is where you want us, make it clear. Yeah. At least that was my prayer. Lord, yeah. if this is where yeah. you want me, make it clear. Mm-hmm. Like, make it clear. I want to walk away from here positive and excited about, oh, man, this is where I'm coming. And in my heart, I think that's what I wanted. I really wanted to be there at Andrews, because I wanted to do something different than Zach. I'm like, he's going to go there, I'm going to go here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't God's plan. I yeah. remember we we met with all of our department heads that time. We went we went to all they took us on the little tours. Yeah. And we split up and I met with my department head, you met with y'all's mm-hmm. and then we all came back together in a little our little our little hotel room that mm-hmm. was on campus there. Mm-hmm. And you remember this? Do you remember what happened? Do y'all remember? You talking about where we stayed in the in Andrews? We remember we stayed at Andrews in the little hotel yeah. rooms, the little yeah. apartment rooms they had. Yeah. We all discussed. We all came. Together what we thought about the college, and we thought, and we and were just amazed experience. because yeah. we were like, "Dude, this like we were all to the same. We pretty much came to the same conclusion. Like, yeah. this, at this time, man, like, no, nah, I don't think this is where God wants us to be. Yeah. There's too much that doesn't make me feel like this is where we need to be. Yeah. So we all prayed. Y'all remember that night we prayed and said, "Lord, if because if Afco is where we need to be or wherever we need to be, Lord, make that clear to us." Mm-hmm. And that was I don't know if y'all remember this. That was in March. Mm-hmm. Of 2013, when mm-hmm. we had that meeting at Andrews, yeah. we had a little over three months, just a little bit over three months, to raise money because we had April, May, and June, and then there was a deadline. If you remember, you had to have yeah. a certain amount of money turned into AFCO, so it was like three and a half months or something like that. That we had to raise, we had to raise over thirty thousand dollars for for the five of us because there was five of us that ultimately decided, mm-hmm. our wives and then Jordan, mm-hmm. uh, you, me, you, our wives and Jordan. Um, mm-hmm. 
And that process alone, talk about that. What do you remember happening? Yeah. Like we had to raise money. <laughs> you remember us traveling and going to the different churches mm-hmm. and ministering. And what was that process? What do you remember happening there at that time? Yeah, I remember. You know, when I first really was starting to surrender my life to the Lord, my family was troubled because they were like, "What's happening to you?" They thought I was brainwashed and all this stuff. And and I remember I was I was willing to sell my car. You know, and you I, both I, did that. Year. We were gonna. I, or I was going to. I put it up for sale, and yeah. I had a you know a super nice Mustang convertible, limited edition, mm-hmm. super nice car, and but I was willing to sell it. So my dad thought I was going crazy, you know, and he's like, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna support you to go here." You know, he didn't give me any money, but I just remember the Lord showing up and providing for our need as we would travel and go places. And I remember what sticks out to me most is. I don't. I remember if it was like a week before we we had to have the money, somewhere like right around the deadline, and we still needed like nine thousand. Like, yeah, nine thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, it was like that much. It was literally the day that we left, or the was day, it? The it was day before like that. we left. We, it was a Sabbath. We had to leave on a Sunday to get to get to Apple yeah. by Thursday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that Saturday before the Thursday we had to arrive. Yes. We're nine thousand dollars short, and I was kind of bummed about. it. I was like, Lord, we've been praying. But at that point, we were all excited. We're like, "Look, if God provided this much, yeah. we're just going to show up." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I and mean, they told us to. That's yeah. cold. People's like, "Just come on, anyways." Yeah. But I was still kind of bummed out about it. I was like, Lord, you know, I wanted to show up with yeah. a powerful story to be like, "You, you, you came through with every yeah. penny that we needed." Yeah. Not that we owed anything, because if you if you came, we there, were all broke as a joke. We were broke. We didn't, we didn't have, no have anything. And the plan was that they said, "Come on, anyways, we'll let you work it off." And I'm like, yeah. "I'm not opposed to working off anything. No, nope, I've worked all my life." But <laughs> yeah. the point is, like, I just wanted to be able to have that story. Like, God, you, I know, this would have been double, triple confirmation you were behind this. Yeah, yeah. And, and I so, remember you yeah. called me. Yeah, I think it was that Sabbath after church or something, before that day before we had to leave, and you're like, "Guess what?" I'm like, "What?" You're like, "The money showed up." Like you said, it was like a, someone gave a check, and I don't know who it was, but yeah, I know who all it was at the church, wasn't it? All it was the, the Jonesboro Seventh Day Adventist Church, church board. board. All the money was. They provided. all came together at the last minute, and I remember Chuck, Chuck, hmm. uh, Chuck, and Ann. They had yeah. asked me like, "How much do you? How much do you need?" We're, we're still shy nine thousand, uh, but but I was like, "But but they told us to come anyways, and that we would yeah. we would work it off, and and so we'll we'll have a work plan to work that off." And they're like, oh, "Okay, all right." And then I didn't even know it. I'm I'm like I'm sitting at fellowship dinner. I'm sitting there eating a meal. And then Chuck walks up to me and hands me an envelope. Hmm. He's like, here. He's like, uh, church board just wants to bless you guys. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what is this? I opened it up and I saw $9,000, man. I was just like. You ah. said, cool. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I said- was like, what? <laughs> but in that moment, bro, like, hmm. it was very emotional. Yeah. Because it was almost yeah. like God saying, like, bro, calm down. Like the wink of God. Like, I got, I got you, you, man. I got you. Yeah. I got you. It's, yeah. it, and this is, where, this is where I tell people, there's an old, there's a, there's an old song uh, that, that I've heard many times that I, I still play every once in a while when I'm driving down the road. Uh, mm-hmm. Old Pentecostal song. And he's an on-time God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's an on-time God. Yeah. I guess he is. And then the, the part says, he may not come when you want him, but he will be there yeah. right on time. Yeah. Well, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And that, 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 Message, yeah, came true at that moment. It's like yeah. God was saying, "Look, my, my time is not your timing, bro. Mm-hmm. You haven't even just give me time. Mm-hmm. Wait, I'll come through." Yeah. And so I learned to trust God in that time. Like, okay, Lord, I can see you're behind this. Yeah. See that. So, so from there, so now that we kind of set that stage, right? Mm-hmm. So the Lord led us there to Afco. We we learned, we grew in our experience, and from there, the Lord, in different ways, the Lord launched you immediately into public evangelism. Yeah, we went to AFCO about halfway through. They asked me to be an evangelist, which changed everything for me because I went to to, to be a Bible worker. And then Dakota, we went back home for a bit, and then you, yeah. a few months later, you got a job doing Bible work. Well, me and you both. We, we, we were we doing Bible work together for working, a little bit. Yeah. But then when did you go to... I So what happened was, was 20... So twenty. this was 2014 after we graduated from AFCO, after that fall had ended and we entered the next year. Uh, the Jonesboro Church there had brought us on to help us help them help us train yeah. them and equip them. So we did that for the whole year of 2014. Yeah. And um, you were working, I think, like a, a, a side store. job, yeah. grocery store. I was working with at a t-shirt business to be a screen printer and learning how to do that. And then um, as the end of 2014 came along, like we started seeing like like okay, you know, Ryan's in full time evangelism. 
what we're doing here and locally is not working out very well. So we need to go find a job like in ministry, find something to do. And um, so that led you in 2015 yeah. to end up going to college. Yeah. So I, I, as I was working that, that, that job, I just felt every time I would go in, I just felt like this is not where I need to be. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like the Lord was calling me to do his work, but I didn't know what that looked like fully. You know, I, I didn't know what that meant. And so, but yeah, then the Lord made it clear to me, very clear that he wanted me to go study theology to prepare me to do ministry, what I'm doing now. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's, kind, that's how I was led to, yeah. to feel the call to do full-time ministry. Yeah. yeah. So, so for me, like I remember at 2014, I was starting at the end of 2014 in the fall, I was starting to apply for Bible working positions, one specifically in California. And, um, there was a, that job was about to come to like a conclusion. We were about to, or not the conclusion, like to, to its beginnings. And we were about to work out, um, the details for me to yeah. sign the contract to do that Bible working job. And I was going to be there for like six months. And, um, the pastor there had a dream. It's a very interesting story. I'll tell that real quick. He had a dream. His name was Murray Miller. I never forget this this guy. Never met him in person, although we've talked on the phone brief, briefly. But he had a dream that I came in his office. Now, he had never seen me before. He didn't even know what I looked like. He had a dream that I come in his office and that I was complaining about basically that the church wasn't ready and you know that I was kind of discouraged. So he calls me and tells me this dream. He says, Dakota, he goes, I don't think it's God's will for you to come. Hmm. I was like, but you're basing this off of a dream. I said, how do you know this dream is from the Lord? And he goes, well, I'm not done. He said, in my dream, I had never seen you before. He goes, well, last night you sent me your picture in your bio. He mm -hmm. said, I haven't opened that email until this morning. Mm -hmm. I never knew what you looked like. He said, this morning, while I'm having this phone call with you, I open my email. He said, and I see your picture. He said, I've never seen you before. Mm -hmm. The picture I saw was the same person I saw in my dream. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Are you serious? And he's like, yeah. I'm like. Well, I was like, that's confirmation for me, brother. I'm not coming. And then at that time, at that same time, Ryan had told me, uh, him and Stephanie had been traveling with Amazing Facts, doing prophecy seminars, and Ryan was wanting me to travel with him, him, me and Anna to travel with them. And so he's like, you know, Ryan gave me this awesome opportunity. Look, man, won't you come and help me on the road, and you guys can just stay with us. And, and so I was like, okay, well, that was the only other option there was. So I was like, oh, God, I guess this is what you want me to do, because like, this is, I don't know what else to do. So I took Ryan up on his offer, traveled with them for like nine months in 2015. January to October. Yep, January to October. And then um, and then later, at the, in that nine months, like I, I got to set through seven, I think it was seven, six, you know, six evangelistic campaigns, I think it was, that you did in that, that nine-month period. And I learned a lot, learned a lot, watched Ron preach, learned about public evangelism. And then I realized like along the way, I was falling in love with public evangelism. There was like two nights, I think, out of the seminar, Ryan would let me preach in some of the seminars. So I got some preaching experience to preach a public campaign to figure out what that was like. And then I decided, like, you know, I want to try something different. Hmm. So um, well, I wanted to be a public evangelist at the time. So I reached out to Amazing Facts. And they told me no. They was like, well, we got a full team. You know, we don't really have an opening. And, and I was like, okay, I understand. So I was really discouraged at the time. And we applied for a Bible working job in Tennessee, uh, Sparta, Tennessee, to be exact. And um, that's... That was where I really grew. I remember, I remember when yeah, you made. I remember there. when you made that decision because we were, we were, we were living in Imboden, Arkansas yeah. at the time. Yeah, and we had went out to the school. I mean, you were shooting hoops. Yeah, that's right. And Dakota was really discouraged, and and he was like, you know, I just I don't know, man. I, I want to work for the Lord, but mm. he goes, I, I, if the right opportunity don't come available, no, no, I'm sorry. He had already heard about the opportunity in, in Tennessee, but he was really warring on whether or not he should even pursue that job. Mm. And, uh, and, but he, he really wanted to work for amazing facts, but amazing facts had already told him, you know, we're not, we're not ready for you at this point. And, uh, I don't know. I just felt led to tell him, I'm like, bro, look, there, there's a, there, obviously there's something that God wants you to learn or there's something, mm. there's something that, 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 that there, where God wants you to be. I said, it may be Tennessee as this opportunity has come available. Maybe you need to, maybe you need to shoot for the skies here and see, see what happens. And so you did. You and Anna went and applied for that job. You well, the, got it. The job description was so specific. Mm -hmm. They wanted a young married couple. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you ain't gonna find no young yeah. married Bible workers. <laughs> like there isn't there isn't such a thing as young married Bible workers. But Anna had actually had Bible working training. She graduated at Amazing Facts too at, at AFCO. And I had Bible worker training and we were both married and I was just kinda like, Okay. So I mean I went and did the I went and visited the job. I mean I did an interview with him. And um, and I, I remember saying in my mind, like, God, 
I want you to be clear that these people actually want, hmm. like they want me here. They want, the, like I want it to be unanimous. Well, that day, that night we met, and that night they all voted unanimously to have us come, and that was just confirmation, like, okay, Lord. Yeah. So we went. That was tough. Yeah. Cause this is the first time that we had ever been really apart. That long, yeah. And and you were like, I'm moving to Tennessee, and I'm like, dude, like, it was kind of, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough for the family. We were all we're, close. Super we're close. all super close. Yeah. And yeah. like, man, Dakota's going off to Tennessee, living living like six six and a half hours away. And yeah. Jordan's at college. Yeah, Jordan's at, off, and yeah. so all of our little group was splitting up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I had to come to grips with it, even in my own heart, because I'm like, well, I can't be out here just like thinking that everybody's got to be back home waiting on me to come home off my meeting since I was off all the time yeah. away from you guys. It's like, no, I had to come to grips with God's 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 opening doors and he's yeah. he's working in our lives to get us to where we all need to be. And so you did Bible work there for what, like a year and a half or so or how many how long was it? Yeah, I was there for fifteen months. Yeah. And then at the end of that, towards the end of that journey, I remember I didn't know like, you know, when your job's coming to an end and you're on contract, you don't know what to do. So you start looking for the next job, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I essentially started doing. So it was a long shot, and I remember Jean Ross at Amazing Facts. You know, he's the leader of evangelism, uh, president of evangelism there, and and I was like, I was like, you know, like I remember last time he shot me down, and it really hurt me, you know, like because mm-hmm. he was basically saying like, you know, you need to get a little bit more experience, you know, because I was super young. I was only like twenty one. Yeah, I was twenty one when I first reached out to him. Now I'm twenty two, and I'm thinking like he's not gonna. I mean. He's not going to take this 22-year-old to be a public speaker for Amazing Facts and an evangelist for Amazing Facts ministry. Like, there's no way. And um, so I, I just decided, you know what? It's nothing, nothing's going to hurt in trying to reach out to him again. So I just poured my heart out to him in an email. I still got the email on my phone. Mm-hmm. And I basically told him, I was like, look, man, find another 22-year-old that's going to work as hard as me. You know, I, I just kind of poured my heart out. I was like, I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready for a public evangelism. Just preach my first prophecy seminar. It's going great. And so I just told him what was going on, and and um and I told him like, look, just take a chance, if you will. Like, give me a try, give me a chance, just give me an opportunity, give me a chance, please. And um, poured my heart out to him, and didn't think I just figured he'd be like, you know, some young kid trying to you know be a public yeah. speaker or whatever. And, but that's what I really felt I love to do. I love to share and preach God's word and teach God's word. And so I sent that email to him, and like two weeks later, me and Anna for like two weeks, we got anxiety to you know. We got we got our we we're in a ditch bank with our mouths wide open and anxiety's just filling in, <laughs> and we're just like, Lord, what's gonna happen? What are we gonna do? You know? And then John Ross calls me one day, Hey, the Golda, you know? And and I'm like, like, Hello, who's this? He's like, This is John Ross at Amazing Fox. And I'm like, Okay. I'm like, well, Hey, brother, how's it going? And he's like, Hey, just wanted to let you know we're gonna bring you on the team. And I'm like, What? <laughs> <laughs> are you serious and he's like he's like oh yeah we're gonna, we're gonna give you a try bring you on the team he's like so you already got the experience traveling with your brother so we don't no need for training we're just gonna bring you on and try you out and bro that was that was the dude, greatest thing in the world right i remember we were on our way to planet fitness me and anna that morning i remember pulling over we pulled in the parking lot of planet fitness to go work out mm-hmm. we didn't even work out we we just sat in that parking lot and we cried me and her both just cried and we thank mm-hmm. god and we said god thank you so much mm-hmm. for just because my prayer at that time was god i want to just be able to pay my bills take care of my needs and do all of that while serving you like well, that the, was my the big that was thing, my the big thing is, is that that was god's way of saying you're my you're my man i'm calling you higher yeah well and 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 to me that's a lot. I mean it's it's one thing we all have bills to pay and there's always a way to pay your bills, you know, but but to me being called into ministry like that and being given the oppor- being given the opportunity to lead out cuz you're a leader. I mean when you're standing up in front of people and yeah. you're given the opportunity to teach mm-hmm. and to preach that's not to be taken lightly. Like you're you're yeah. entrusted. God is entrusting you. He's saying I'm entrusting you mm-hmm. to represent me rightly. Yeah. That that I'm 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 basically knighting you. I'm spiritually knighting you and saying I'm calling you now yeah. to go out as a, as a as a sheep among wolves and 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 represent me and bring people to my kingdom. That's right. That's that's a serious thing and that's it's a high calling. And so that's why like each of us now you know, so Jordan, yeah. you you go to college, you yeah. complete your degree. Yeah, I get I get a lot of experience in call porter ministry during my college time, you know, really growing and yeah, just just uh, amazing experience i wouldn't trade it for anything on this planet man it's 
what I gained there at that school. And yeah, when I graduated, I remember Dakota calling me and it's like, hey man, what are you going to do? And I, I was coming up close to graduation. I'm like, I don't know. I'm praying about it. And he's like, well, you know, there's an opening here at Amazing Facts. And he said, I, obviously I don't call the shots, but mm -hmm. you know, they were wondering, they were like, who should we bring on the team? Do you guys know anybody? And, and he's like, I can, I could mention your name if you think that might be something you would want to pray about and look into. I'm like, well, maybe, yeah, let me, let me pray about that. Let me think on that. He told me, you know, some more about it. And I remember putting my, putting my uh, resume in, in like December and I didn't hear anything December, January, February. So I just thought they forgot about me. They overlooked me. So I'll just move on. And then March, John Ross called me and was like, hey, you know, sorry, we've been out of town and they were in on a mission trip or something. We got back. We looked over your resume and your video. We prayed about it and we'd like to have you on the team. So when you graduate, you're going to do your first training meeting with Dakota. So you're on the team. And I was like, whoa, you know, I yeah, was amazed amazing, too. Man. And so, yeah, I've been doing that since I joined 2019 is when yep. I joined the team traveling so, full so, time. So since being in ministry, what can you guys say has been... Uh, I mean, there's obviously challenges, and I don't want to focus on the negative. Let's focus on the positive here. What have you? What have you? What lessons have you learned as an evangelist full time, in in that ministry leadership position, leading out, leading people in Bible studies, leading people to Christ? What are some of the life lessons, uh, great spiritual lessons that you've learned along the way, uh, being in the position you've been in? Hmm. There's a lot. Oh, that's a broad it's question. To, I know. Yeah, it's but, a broad but, question. I don't know. You got anything that comes over tip of your mind? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I ruminate mean, on it for a moment. For me, it's one of the as far as ministry goes. It's important, and I'm still learning, trying to learn this lesson. But it's very important to not focus on seeming success or numbers. Yes. Yes. Because when you're doing what we do, traveling and doing meetings, sometimes you can get discouraged if only just a few people show up mm -hmm. or the, half the church isn't coming. or mm -hmm. And, you know, you can base your experience and how well you're doing in the sight of heaven by based on the numbers. Right. Yeah. And and that's that's not wise. You mm -mm. know, that's not what we're supposed to do because that does, that's not the real substance of of your ministry, you mm -hmm. know, so... Yeah. But it's very easy to focus on that, the yeah. outwards and the externals and what's seeming to be success. Especially when you're hearing of other evangelists out there. That's oh, like, yeah. Oh, I had 40 baptisms or 50 <laughs> baptisms at this meeting. And it's like, and and, and you're, you you may be averaging like, you know, in my meetings, I'll tell people, I'm, I'm not ashamed. I've had meetings with lots of baptisms. I've had meetings with no baptisms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um, very few. I've only had like maybe two me two or three meetings out of all of the meetings I've done that had no baptisms. But that doesn't mean those meetings didn't have any success. That's right. Exactly. Uh, That's right. But, but I, I've learned just what you're saying, man. Such a powerful lesson. You don't focus on the numbers. You don't focus on that result because if you're doing what you're called to do, God's going to bring about the results in His way. And I think mm -hmm. that's so important. What, what, whether you're in full-time ministry or you're just at church and you're trying to witness to your family or your friends, mm -hmm. Don't look at the seeming success. You may say, oh, man, I've been praying for my family or trying to share the word with them for years, and it's not working out. And you can mm -hmm. just give up and get discouraged and just totally quit trying to share your faith. But but I would say don't give up. Yeah. Don't look at the numbers. Don't look at the seeming success. Just be faithful and trust that, that God is working as you're being faithful to Him and mm -hmm. uplifting Jesus. So that's one lesson that is comes up constantly. You know, the Lord, you'll yeah. be tempted to fall into that type of thinking easily so that's that's one that comes to my mind amen mm. amen what about you dakota well there's a lot of lessons that come to mind i would think you know i try to find some i'm gonna try to think of something that's, that's more related to um you know people that watch this that may not be in ministry per se yeah but that are are you know wanting to serve the lord but they're not serving the lord as like a public speaker or preacher mm -hmm. like what we do sure um I, I think of i think of you know what is oftentimes preached about but that is heavily neglected and preachers can struggle with this too, and that is a meaningful relationship with Christ every single day. You know, um, w when we first started the journey of everything we talked about, right, when it all started fresh out of high school, there was a purpose that led us to God's Word, and that purpose was uh, that, or the reason, rather, that led us to God's Word was that we were searching for purpose. Sometimes we think after we become familiar with God's Word or familiar with uh, church or, you know, the dynamics of church and the lifestyle of living, you know, in a, in a church experience, um, we tend to 
forget how significant and important seeking after that relationship with God was as it was from the beginning, right? You mm-hmm. see this in Revelation 3 where God says to the church of Laodicea, you know, you know, you're hot. I'd rather have you hot or cold, mm-hmm. but you're lukewarm. You you become comfortable mm-hmm. in your condition, and, and he, even he, even to Ephesus, he says you've lost what, your first love. That's what I was saying. Yeah, he, he he says to a lot of the churches, there's always something wrong with them, and with every church, you can find something wrong with them. But those churches also too, you can internalize that truth to represent what's wrong with us. Right. And the church is not a building. It's not an organization. It's, it's a it's it's a people, right? And people have problems. People have mm-hmm. issues, and. For me, I, I've noticed along the way, the devil will use your familiarity with the Bible. You may not be a preacher or a teacher or whatever, but you might be a, a student of the Bible, right? He'll use your familiarity with the Bible to keep you from studying and keep you from wanting to grow because you think you already know mm-hmm. what's necessary to know for yeah, salvation. I've gained enough knowledge that I can— Yeah. I can— I can uh, function off what I know. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's that. To, that's a, that's a, that's a lie the devil wants to get you to do to to accept because if he can get you to say I I I don't need to read the Bible today because well you know I already know a lot of it I already have this down and let's face it you know I'm gonna be doing a I'm gonna be giving a Bible study later right and ministers do this a lot you know I'm gonna speak something to ministers here they they tend to get so caught up doing the work of the Lord they forget the Lord at the work. They get so caught up serving others, and this has happened to me so many times where I'm sure you guys can relate. Mm -hmm. You have to do stuff in ministry, right? Like that's Mm -hmm. just what we do. And while, yes, like you talked about earlier, like, you know, doing those Bible studies and stuff, it wasn't a a job for you, you enjoyed it. But let's be faith, let's be, um, let's be, let's be serious about it and not be fake about it in the sense too. We have those moments. I have those moments in my life. And I think you all would agree. Where you're just kind of like, you get tired in your Christian walk. You know what I mean? And this this applies to all Christians, right? You yeah. get tired. The busyness brings you to a point of yeah. almost burnout if you're and not careful. This is why some people just don't show up to church some days, right? Mm-hmm. They, they're they tired. Like yeah. they've been working mm-hmm. all week, their job. They, and sometimes ministers get tired too. And and you can, you can say, well, you know, I got to give a Bible study later. And so, you know, I'll just look over the notes of my Bible study that I'm going to have to give later. Just familiarize myself with what I already know. And then there's no growth from you on an individual level to get into God's Word and study it for yourself and to grow and to continue to progress in your Christian journey. And and that, to me, has been something that's, as, I, as I've experienced that, that struggle, I'm more aware of that now. And when I see myself doing that, I have to say, nope, 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 nope. I need to spend some time. How I began, I need to continue. Mm-hmm. I need to spend some time with Jesus alone every day mm-hmm. in prayer and in Bible study. And when you do that, sharing comes natural, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. that's that's, I, that's one of the biggest things for me. I think I think another thing along those lines is you're talking about ministry and you're just, you're just your Christian experience, you know, as you're walking with God. To be very careful to not focus on other people and their faults and what yeah. they've done wrong Amen, and what the bro. church is doing here and and we get our attention on the wrong thing. Mm, I'm not yeah. saying don't be bl- don't be blind and unaware of things, but yeah, yeah, we get we get so focused on on the errors of people and how they treated me, and right, and and we get our attention and our main focus off of off of Jesus in a relationship with Him. And I've just seen so many people walk away or be discouraged because of how they were treated or the scars they received from other people. And it's very difficult for them to to look past all of that and to actually look to the one who it's all about. Um, and, and that's a constant, it's a day-by-day, right? Mm. <laughs> day-by-day yep. podcast, yeah. day-by-day thing, a uh, yeah. continual experience. And it's it's very, it has to be very intentional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, and I think that's, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about next week. That's right. Is mm. this what we've been really the whole theme of what we've been sharing is the necessity mm-hmm. and importance mm. of a relation, a meaningful personal relationship with Jesus and focus mm. on Him. That's it. What about you, Ryan? Yeah, you know, there's a lot. Like you said, there's a lot we could sit here for the next couple mm. hours and just go pan through all of the lessons we've learned. But if I were to pick one above all, mm. it is very, very, very easy to get caught up in um, when you're working for the Lord in general, whether it be in a leadership capacity, evangelist, pastor, um, or if it's maybe just a Sabbath school teacher. Yeah. You know, um, 
someone leading out in small group Bible studies, you know, whatever capacity in which God is leading you to help others or to lead others, it can easily be in our in our church culture, and this is where I want to again not be negative, but but more or less be fair and be honest. In our church culture, we have created this mentality of all of our efforts is for the purpose of bringing people to the church. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't want to speak negative on that because we clearly see that, yes, when people come to Christ, he is the head of the body, the body's the church. So theoretically, philosophically, very clearly and truthfully in his word, yes, if you're doing your efforts properly, it's going to eventually at some point mm. come to the point where that person you're witnessing to is going to may have to make a decision on what what church group or organization they're going to assemble themselves with each week. Mm-hmm. So I'm not taking away from that at all. Sure. But God has helped me to learn over the years. Take your mind off of get the focus off of making church members. Mm. Because that's not the work that I've called you to do. I didn't call you to focus on getting them into the body. You mm-hmm. refer to it as a us and them mentality. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. There's this mentality of, well, there's us, the remnant, and them, the heathens. And in other yeah. words, everybody that doesn't believe like me. And my efforts is to help them believe more like me mm. and, and, and go through my checklist of all the things that they're supposed to believe. And once I get them confirmed in that, then I'll graft them in and make them happy members of mm. the remnant. Mm-hmm. That's not evangelism. Yeah. That's institutionalism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we need to we need to switch we need to switch Amen. switch switch in our brains, go to that proper mode of thinking, which is, if I do my job that God has called me to do, there you go, bro, in bringing them to Christ first, mm-hmm. uplifting Jesus, even down to your sermons. Like my sermons have shifted over the years, yeah, and it's taken some time. When I first started out in evangelism, I was all about making sure I preach all these individual doctors mm. our doctrines preaching them where they're airtight and in your face and you can't argue with that. So mm. the fact that you can't argue with it, join the church that you can't argue with. Mm. You know, believe it and yeah. join. You know, it was yeah. kind of a, that mentality. Like, if you don't believe this truth, then you're just lost. Yeah. In other words, it was very doctrinal focused. Mm. And it kind of goes back to the little saying you always say, you know, we, we focus, mm. we, we tend to focus more on the doctrines than the doctor. Yeah. We, we tend to focus on the Sabbath rather than the Lord of the Sabbath. And we mm-hmm. got this language, we got this idea mm-hmm. from Lee Vinden. Because mm-hmm. Lee Vinden taught us that it's not about what you do, it's who you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. And who you know changes what you do. I Amen. live by that. I believe in that. That's the gospel. Amen. Jesus says in John 17, 3, uh, and, and, you know, and it, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. It's the knowing factor, yeah. the yeah. gnosko, that knowing factor yeah. of really coming to in, a, in an in-depth relationship not based on a bunch of rules and regulations, but based on an intimate relationship, mm-hmm. uh, of, of based on love. And so the, the lesson, if I could just sum it all up in this, it would simply be the number one lesson I've learned is don't, you know, don't focus on all of these important but yet external things. Focus on Christ. Get them to learning who Christ is. Help lead and guide them in uplifting Jesus. As I, Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people. Mm-hmm. When you introduce them to the Lord, eventually, as a result of coming to know the true Lord, they're going to want to mm-hmm. follow the Lord's yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. They're going to want to They're wanna, gonna wanna bring their life in harmony with these beautiful biblical principles. It's going to fall in naturally as Amen. a result. Right. And so now I try to make my sermons not so much about the individual doctrines, but I fold in as much as I can an opportunity to uplift Jesus and connect Christ to that topic, to help shed light on who he is and why it's important from his character perspective that it's important to teach these things. Mm-hmm. And 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 I praise God for that because it's changed my whole perspective. I tell people when I have my organizational meetings at all of my churches that I go do an evangelistic series, two days before the meeting starts, I always have an organizational meeting. And the, one of the first things that I say when I stand up in that organizational meeting is I tell the leaders of the church that are present, I'm not here to make people a member of your church. I, I do the same thing. Yeah. I'm not here to convert people to Seventh-day Adventism. Yep. I'm here to bring people to Jesus Christ. Amen, brother. Now, where God chooses to lead them and where they choose to go beyond that point is out of my control. Yep, we point them to the I'm word. I'm going to give them Christ, and I'm going to point yep. them toward the truth. Yep, but it's mm-hmm. their decision. It's not my goal to make them Seventh Day Adventist. And actually, what's funny is I said that one time to an uh, to to a, uh, an elder at a church that I was doing a series, and the elder just 
vehemently disagree with me. They're like, oh, you said that, but that's why you're here. You are here to make them members of the church. That's why we're paying you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I had to correct them. I said, no, no, no. If that's your mentality, then you really seriously need to go back and pray and seek the Lord in this area. Yeah. An evangelist, a pastor, that it's not our job. Our job is not to first and foremost make people a member of a church. Yeah. Our job is to lead them to Jesus. And Institutionalism if we do that properly, doesn't save people. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Hundred percent. It's agree. not about what you yeah. do. It's who you know. It's who you know. And who you know yep. changes what you do. When we come to learn that, when we focus on that, yep. then 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 everything else will fall in. And that's as Jordan said, yeah. is what we're gonna talk about next week. <laughs> We're going to talk about yeah. what it means to truly know God, and um, we're gonna we're gonna pick we're gonna we're, we're probably gonna challenge you guys uh, mm-hmm. quite a bit. Uh, we're gonna challenge each other. We're gonna challenge you guys that how do we properly uplift Jesus? How do we remain connected to that vine each and every day, abiding in Him to make sure that we're constantly in a knowing relationship with Him? That at any moment, if our numbers call, that means you know we die. Or we're here to Jesus comes back. Whenever that moment comes, are you ready to stand mm. confident before your your mm-hmm. your Savior, knowing that you you know Him, mm-hmm. that He's not just some fellow distant, uh, uh, fantastical God that you know you yeah. just kind of talked about and 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 dwelt among you know over the last years, but you mm. really know Him. And that's Amen. what we're going to be talking about next week. Final thoughts, guys, before we close mm. this down. Go ahead, Jordan. Say no. Final thoughts. You that's good? it. That's you good? It. I'm good, man. I just praise the Lord. We were able to do this episode. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, that being said, what we want you to do before we sign off is we want you to um, <laughs> we want you to um, go down and so Run out of air. <laughs> <laughs> Run out of air. Subscribe, subscribe. Put, drop us a comment, my friends. Uh, tell us what you've learned in ministry over the years, what has blessed you, and uh, and give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and you're definitely going to want to tune in next week as we talk about what it means to truly know God and be connected to the vine of Jesus Christ. So we'll see you back here next week on Day by Day Podcast.